Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Jared here with another concert review. This one is for Buckethead, August 31st, 2024 in Orlando, Florida at the Plaza Live. This is my third time seeing Buckethead and I got into Buckethead back in the mid 2000s, right around 2004, 2005, because I started becoming a diehard Guns N' Roses fan. And in that I did discovered that he was a member of Guns N' Roses, and he was weird and freaky, but he was really fucking talented. And ended up falling in love with him and his guitar playing and his music and everything. It's kind of disappointing because I ended up getting into him like right when he um, you know, left the band and everything. But anyway, he was on Chinese Democracy, and that's my favorite album of all time. And in 2017, saw him for the first time at the House of Blues in Orlando, and then... A couple years later, in 2019, saw him again at the House of Blues in Orlando, and definitely two very different concerts for me. I actually did a review for the for the 2019 show. It's actually my first concert review I've done on YouTube, and uh, I uh, was very proud of that video and excited to make that one. And I think it's one of my favorite videos that I've made um, in my channel's history. So yeah, Buckethead is. He's a recluse. He, you know, he loves his anonymity. He's always in character. You can't really find pictures of him without his mask and everything. He's done one out of character interview in his whole entire life. And it's because he has had a lot of health issues over the years, you know, even back in the Guns N' Roses days. And he eventually just had that interview um, where he kind of was explaining what was going on and some of the health issues that he's been going through. So anytime that I see he's touring or near or anything like that, I always want to go see him, especially for these health you know, reasons and whatnot. So yeah, I saw that he was finally, he did like one or two shows, I want to say last year, but nothing crazy. They're over in like California, maybe just testing the waters a little bit. But um, yeah, I saw that he was deciding to t like go on a full blown tour again and I was super stoked to see he had some Florida dates. So he did three Florida dates. Uh, he started at he started in St. Pete uh, near Tampa, and then he did this Orlando show that I'm about to talk about, and then he also did Fort Lauderdale area. So the tickets were not bad as far as the pricing goes. I was keeping an eye on them for multiple weeks, and just the general consensus, it looked like you had pretty much two options. Uh, for this venue, you could do general admission standing room or you could do the balcony. Balcony, I believe, was a little bit more money, but I was more interested in the general admission standing room personally. But standing room, the tickets were, the ones that I was seeing, they were, they were mainly around like 60 bucks. Um, and that didn't really change too much from what I saw. And I'm still trying to figure out this whole ticket thing. Like, there's a lot of strategy involved in it if you... Uh, you know go to a lot of concerts and stuff and you're really trying to get the best deals and the best seats and all that so unfortunately i accidentally bought resale tickets so i ended up spending like 79 dollars on floor tickets and if i would have just gotten i would have gotten the same exact ticket from the website that was mainly selling them as far as the, the legitimate tickets not resale ones i could have gotten it for like 20 bucks cheaper, 25 bucks cheaper. So a mistake on my end, but like I said, still trying to figure out this whole ticket thing. So went ahead and got those ticket, got that ticket a few days before the show. And yeah, if you know my, if you follow me, if you're a friend of mine, if you're, you know, follow the channel, you know that I went and saw Jane's Addiction just what, four days before this concert. I don't think I've ever been to two consecutive concerts in this short of a time span of my life. Just kind of weird how it fell. But I, it was there were two concerts that I definitely wanted to go to. It wasn't even a question. I also wanted to go see Slash, just a side note, earlier in the month of August, but decided not to do that one. So anyway, Buckethead. Uh, went ahead and headed over to the venue. Had never been to this venue before. On the way there, I listened to the NASCAR Xfinity race uh, from Darlington that Christopher Bell won. And yeah, I kind of pull off the highway uh, it's only an hour away from where I live, and yeah, it's it's literally in Orlando, but it's not like the city. It's like a suburb. It's in like a town that seems very like retro and old, and 
when I pulled up to the venue itself, I was really surprised how small this venue was and how just different it was from anything that I've ever experienced before. It's in just a regular kind of parking lot. Uh, my mom described it as like almost like a bowling, bowling alley type of parking lot. I kind of described it as like a supermarket type of parking lot. I mean, for God's sakes, it's right next to, uh, it's right next to Marshall's. It's next to a big lot. It's, it's not in the same exact plaza as those, but it's right next to it. And it's just, nobody was working parking. There were parking was free. It was really nice. Actually, it was, you know, it's not one of those huge venues where you have all these different things. So that was surprising, but that was interesting. So on the top of the venue, it has a really retro old sign that says the Plaza Live. And it's like almost like a disco ball that kind of spins around slowly. Uh, I, I loved that. thought that was so uh, just old fashioned. And I thought it was really cool to get a video of that, especially to open my blog with. By the way, speaking of my blog, I do two separate videos now anytime I go to a concert. So I upload the blog separately first and then I do the review second. And uh, like a lot of the stuff I'm talking about in this video is included in my blog. So please check that out if you're interested um, and comment on that if you're interested also. I already uploaded that the other day. So got a video of that and went ahead and got in line. The line wasn't super long, but it was starting to wrap around the building a little bit. Got to talk to some fans while I was in line and uh, yeah, like the fans I was talking to, they said that uh, they got into Buckethead uh, at the, uh, what was it, Bonnaroo Festival, I want to say. Um, yeah, so that was interesting. It's just like everyone gets into these artists in such different ways. And uh, it's cool just to hear the different stories. So uh, said so Showtime, it's, well, on, online it said that the doors would open at 7 and I got there around 6.30, so waited in line for about 30 minutes, and then the line eventually started to move around 7. And yeah, uh, you know, getting into the venue was easy. Uh, they immediately just check your ticket, and then you walk in the doors. And I will say the security at this venue was definitely higher than Daly's Place from in Jacksonville that I just went to for the Jane's Addiction concert. Uh, nothing crazy, but they did kind of have that metal detector turnstile type of vibe. And I don't know if you were supposed to do this, but I saw others doing it. So I kind of just like <laughs> did it as well, but just pulling stuff out of your pockets and showing everyone what was in your pockets um, after you walk through the metal detector. But the security looked very serious. They looked like they were uh, really taking their job seriously and making sure that everything was done correctly. But walking in was easy. So when you walk in, it's kind of just this uh, medium sized lobby that's just pretty much empty other than some potted plants and they have a bar bar area over to the right uh, but one of the main things I noticed was the smell of the venue it smelled old it smelled like <laughs> different it definitely had a scent to it and it wasn't bad it was just like it immediately gave me vibes like, oh, this is an old venue. And like, there's been, I'm sure there's been a lot of shit and a lot of memories, a lot of different things that have happened here. And it kind of just started this uh, thing in my head. Like there's, there's a mystique around this place. So pretty much I just uh, walked through the little doors that they had that were open to get to the actual inside of the venue. And when you walk in, it was, it was very dark with a lot of like purple lighting, things like that. But I immediately noticed over in the corner that Buckethead had a merchandise booth. And this is something I was not expecting because the first time I went and saw Buckethead, I didn't see merchandise at all. The second time I went, I found a merchandise booth after the show. The only thing they were selling was a random Buckethead DVD, which I did buy, but this merchandise, this merchandise booth actually had two shirts and like a few different stickers. And I was super hyped because like I said, I just wasn't expecting it. So I went to went, immediately went in line. Uh, if you know me, the tradition is to always get a shirt at any of these concerts that I go to. I don't even have a Buckethead shirt. So the first shirt 
was a black one with uh it was black and white it had white lettering and then a white graphic and it was kind of just like a picture of Buckethead uh stirring like a witch's brew type of deal and like the the, the letters in Buckethead kind of melt into the witch's brew and then the second shirt was just uh an all yellow shirt with black lettering it had some phrase that i don't really know what it means i actually tried to google it but still it's like i don't know just classic buckethead kind of a phrase that i didn't even understand chromatic something and then underneath it had a kind of like a drawing of buckethead um that uh was just him with the guitar and everything so the shirts were like 40 45 dollars each something like that which is pretty standard i definitely thought the black shirt was cooler wasn't really interested in the yellow shirt but um yeah when i got in line uh got the black shirt immediately and just threw it on didn't want to be holding it all night for sure especially with it being standing room and uh yeah went ahead and walked over to the standing room and it was filling up but i remember when i went to the house of blues for this for buckethead the second time i was like third row and like right when I walked in the venue, I got in, I got into the crowd and this time was very similar. Uh, even though it was filling up the kind of the front area wasn't super full. So I made sure I wanted to get right in the middle of the stage. I wanted to have a good view of both sides of the stage and have a good sound of both sides of the stage. So got in the middle and I was third row again and yeah it was just super cool waiting around and seeing the venue fill up and just kind of taking it all in and talking to the people around you and just socializing and talking about different things like this one guy was telling me how he used to work uh, a lot of different concert venues back in the day and how like how crazy of an industry that is and how it really uh, unfortunately got him uh, hooked on you know some substances and whatnot but luckily he's been for 14 years sober which I thought was super awesome and that was awesome of him to share that with me uh, but yeah talking about we were talking about Jane's addiction Dave, Dave Navarro we we're talking about Buckethead Guns N' Roses Soundgarden just all these different things and he was just super cool him and his wife actually travel from Hollywood Florida and so they drove multiple hours to get there and actually thinking about it now i was thinking to myself he buckethead was going to play at fort lauderdale why wouldn't have they just gone to that show but you know whatever he, he said he had he had a good time that he was amazed so that's all that matters also some of the other people talking to them and uh a lot of the times when these concerts happen i noticed that like of course they're just going to play like rock music over the the uh the you know the PA or whatever uh, before the show starts but and I remember the second Buckethead show I went to that's what they did but this show was different so Buckethead had just like a bunch of like creepy and scary sounds and noises and even like some Halloween theme music I'm pretty sure not like the the classic Dun, 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 you know the one that everyone knows but some of the other um uh, some of the other like songs or uh, music from that from that uh movie like during like the really scary parts when it's like you know michael's gonna come out and it's really slow and eerie like the, you know the slow piano music so that just also added to the vibe and like the more i stood around the more i was like this place is like such a like it it's a theater but it, it really does give like club vibes. Like this, this that's what it. That's what I kept saying to myself. Like this is like a legit club. Um, this is the smallest venue I've ever been to. It, uh, it's it's less than like a Hard Rock Orlando or like a House of Blues Orlando. Not by a ton, but I want to say it's like two thousand, maybe a little bit less than two thousand people that it can hold. But it has a balcony area, which is uh, similar to House of Blues. Also, I would say. It's definitely more similar to House of Blues than it is any other venue that I've been to, uh, but still different. But like I said, there was just a vibe. There was just a vibe about the whole thing. And uh, it just, it felt weird, like, but it was good. It was just like kind of creepy. And there was just a mystique around the whole thing for me. And then just kind of the cherry on top is that guy that I was telling you about that worked uh, a lot of those concert venues back in the day. He eventually uh, started telling me, he's like, you know what happened at this venue a few years ago, right? And I'm like, no, what? 
And he was like, um, the artist Christina Grimmy uh, from The Voice actually got murdered here by like a crazy fan. And my initial reaction in my head was like, okay, whatever. Like, I didn't know anything about this and I don't even know this guy from anything. So do I really trust him? You know, no. I, do I really believe this? I don't know. Who knows? Whatever. But then he pulled it up on his phone and started showing me like news articles and like information about it. So it was, it was actually 100% legit, which once again, just added to it, just really added to it. Um, not in a like, and I'm not like, you know, rest in peace, Chris, Christina Grimmie. And it was a murder suicide, by the way. Um, and I'm not saying like, I'm not using that as like a positive thing, but I'm saying it added to the experience as if once again, just giving me that affirmation, like this is a really weird and creepy place. Like to, to know that that happened, I'm not surprised. Like you can feel it. You can feel that weird, scary vibe, like to this uh, creepy venue and everything. And also with Buckethead performing and like just the way he is and his music and his interest and everything, like I said, that just added to it as well. Um, it really was one of those things that just all kind of like came together and it was like, it was trippy. It really was trippy. So anyway, um, yeah, so I noticed that the stage he had, there was a drum set, which I don't remember there ever being a drum set. And I was like, is this, is this drum set actually going to get used or is it just there for show? And then you over to the, um, over to my right, I guess, like if you're looking at the stage from your, your vantage point, it would be over here. He has his two Marshall amplifiers with his um, Eddie Van Halen heads on top of them, which was, you know, typical. I remember that's what he had when I went back a few years ago. And uh, it's pretty much it. I mean, on the back, like above the drum riser, they have a, you know, a sign that said like, uh, I want to say it said Mascotron or something like that. Um, and then there was like a little caption underneath it. But once again, just one of those things, I didn't know what it meant, didn't look familiar, didn't understand it, but just a classic Buckethead thing in my opinion, where it's like, it's something, but I don't know what it means or I don't understand it. Basically just waited around for, you know, a good 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, showtime was supposed to be eight o'clock. Um, he, before he came on eventually i noticed so like the first thing that happens when like things were changing there was like a there was like a big like thump or thud and it scared me and i kind of found humor in that because i think it was um i think it was intentional like one of those like kind of like scary movie jump scare things that uh he, i think he probably does before every show i don't even know what the noise was but it scared me and i thought that was a funny touch um and then there's like a little intro that comes on. It's hard to tell what, it, so it was like a spoken word intro. I don't know what it was saying exactly. It was like really hard to understand what the words were. I remember I deciphered the words free man, um, but like the crowd started to get like quieter and like everyone around me is like trying to decipher what it was saying and talking about like, can you hear it? What does it say? And like the guy behind me is like, oh, this is intentional. Like they're trying to like get the crowd quiet on purpose before the show starts. As far as the stage goes, you could, if you look over once again to my right as like when I'm looking right now, but you're right, if you're watching the video, it'd be right over here. That was the area where like uh, some of the stage hands and roadies and like guitar tech, his guitar tech, uh, P sticks was coming out of and walking around and everything. And like everyone's watching that area for him to come out. And I remember I was thinking and some other people are speculating that they did that on purpose for everyone to look at that side of the stage. And then he's actually gonna come out on the other side and shock everyone. But no, he did come out on that side of the stage. And uh, of course crowd goes crazy. He walks out and you know, he, he, uh, he has his white Les Paul, classic white Les Paul. Um, so Buckethead's super tall and everything. So he's got the KFC bucket and he has the white mask, of course. His hair is, it has a little bit more gray in it. I did notice, um, which is, you know, to be expected, he's getting older, but it wasn't like super noticeable and it wasn't as bad as I, I don't, I've seen it. Um, in like some other videos that I've seen that I think he uploaded to maybe his website or something where he, he looked like he was like almost full blown gray in those videos. But no, his hair was black with like some gray in it. And then he had like a long sleeve shirt that said that had like cartoons on it and it said like ghosts, ghouls and scares. And 
just had like some ghost and some cartoons on it. I don't know what the specific cartoon was. Uh, then he had some like plaid pajama pants and then he had his classic Converse. And he came out and just started shredding. And yeah, he, uh, he just started ripping of course. And he didn't show any signs of age at all. He didn't show any signs of health issues at all. Um, the only thing, I, like I said, that I would say showed a sign of age is like maybe a little bit more gray in his hair. But he came out and uh, he definitely played some. Uh, he he definitely played some songs that I uh, am familiar with. But he also definitely played a decent amount of material that I wasn't familiar with. But uh, but you know, really great. I mean, of course, he shreds. Um, he can. He, he's really good at tapping. He's really good at finger picking. Uh, he loves doing the kill switch, the different uh, genres that he plays. There's so many different genres. Um, he still does his robotic dance moves, as, you know, especially even during the song sometimes, which is cool, especially when he's like, you know, playing and doing the robot at the same time, which is awesome. Uh, he uh, he had his nunchucks, didn't fuck around with those like a ton, but I'd say twice during the show he he did do the nunchucks. Um, like once he did it with his guitar, like he was playing the guitar and doing the nunchucks at the same time. And I remember I uh, <laughs> like a little bit earlier in the a little bit early in the show, I actually got to jump up to row two. So now I was in row two, and I believe this is the closest I've ever been for a buckethead show. And uh, had a, I just had a great view of everything, really. And uh, yeah, when he was doing like the nunchucks, I remember it was like a little scary in a sense because it almost looks like he's gonna fling the nunchuck, nunchucks at your fucking face. And uh, but he he doesn't he doesn't throw them out to the crowd or anything. He used to back in the Guns N' Roses days, uh, which I I don't know. I just I've never like I don't think I've ever like felt a nunchuck but it looks like that shit would hurt if it fucking hit you so to think he used to do that back in the day i don't know maybe they're soft i don't fucking know but uh, that was definitely something that i remembered um so like a few songs in uh he had this dude come out and start playing the drums with them and i have to say i thought he was fine he was solid uh he had a he also sang some songs he he has a good voice uh, and it was very different. I, you know, I, these other two Buckethead shows I've been to, they never had a singer, never had a drummer, anything like that. He always normally would just play, you know, something over the PA that he would play his guitar live to, which he did do some of that for sure. But a lot of it uh, had that plus the drummer. Um, and they did some songs like, they did some covers, like they definitely did uh, Black Sabbath, uh, War Pigs, that was one. Um, and then even later in the show, Buckethead did some more covers. He did a decent amount of covers. Um, they did like Backstreet Boys, uh, they did uh, Van Halen, Mean Street. And mind you, not all these covers was the dude drumming and singing. Uh, some of them he was but not all of them. Uh, Scorpions, The Zoo, those were, some, especially Main Street and The Zoo were like high, major highlights for me. I wasn't, really wasn't expecting to play The Zoo. The Zoo was one of my, fav my, my, one of my brother's favorite Scorpion songs. So I made sure to get a clip of that for him. And uh, that was just so shocking that he played that. Um, of course, he, he plays, uh, you know, Jordan, his most famous song from Guitar Hero 2. And, uh, he obviously just has so many effects that he uses and so many pedals that he uses a lot of wah-wah and distortion. A lot of the times he would go back over to his amps and like fiddle around with, I don't know if it was the volume or what, but uh, he would fiddle around with the knobs sometimes. Uh, one thing I will say, I mentioned earlier, I tried to get in the middle of the stage because I wanted to have a good balance of the, the sounds. And I guess I should have noticed this visually, but there's only the two amplifiers that he has on that side of the stage and he mainly stays in front of them the whole show for the most part sometimes he'll veer over to the front of the drum set a little bit but a lot of most of the show he's going to stay right in front of his amps and um that's where the muse that's where you're going to hear the music so next time i go to buckethead if i'm in general admission um you know god willing that i can see him again at some point uh i will definitely try to do 
I guess stage right is what it's called and be right in front of the amplifiers, um, have that better, that better vantage point as far as the sound goes. But, um, yeah. Uh, so he started a little bit past eight and he played for about an hour and then he, uh, kind of takes an intermission, which I forgot about actually in my other two shows, cause it's been a few years, but I forgot he does do like an intermission and it's like a good 20 minute intermission. And, uh, he comes back out and this time once again something else that was different he pulls out an acoustic guitar and never seen that before uh as far as in person anything acoustic relating to buckethead so he starts doing some acoustic stuff uh, some slow songs some like lullabies and shit like that some classic stuff uh you know some you know some hillbilly like almost like banjo redneck stuff uh, but yeah, I got some of that and I will say even though he was on his acoustic It was very very electrified still. Uh, it was not like just full-blown Stripped acoustic. He still had his effects and his electronic spin on it and everything Actually, uh, there were a few times throughout this part of the set that I thought like this doesn't really sound too much different than his white Les Paul actually in my opinion um so he did a, he did a little section with the acoustic guitar so that was that was interesting to see him play uh the acoustic guitar and then he goes back to the white les paul so a little bit after he goes back to the white les paul there uh i there's something that happened in the crowd right next to me like literally standing right next to me uh there was this father and daughter and uh the guy seemed like he was in his 40s and the daughter seemed like she was maybe a teenager uh, I know, so she was having a great time the whole night. I noticed she was into it and uh, nothing seemed out of the ordinary, but right around this part of the set, I noticed she seemed a little in distress and kind of like leaning on his arm and she seemed like some, something was going wrong, something was upsetting her, like she wasn't feeling well or something. And then within moments, next thing you know, she just collapses, passes out right at my feet and the whole crowd just you know, kind of just turns around is looking at her. She's on the ground and trying to help her up and everyone's pulling their flashlights out. Me and another guy were calling security over to like help. Uh, it was very scary and I've never dealt with anything like that at a concert before. I mean, I've never really dealt with stuff like that in general, but especially, you know, at a concert, it was right there. I was just dumbfounded. I remember one of my first reactions too is like, I was looking at Buckethead, like, you know, how is he going to react to a situation like this? And I noticed which I thought was so cool of Buckethead. You know, I, I think some artists, they wouldn't even give a flying fuck and they would just keep shredding and they would just keep like thinking about themselves and keeping the center of attention on themselves. But he didn't do that. I, I noticed uh, he kind of just, uh, he, he kept playing, don't get me wrong, which isn't bad, but he kind of just kept like a, a really simple guitar riff going the whole time. And he was just watching the situation and making sure that the girl got taken care of and that the situation was resolved before he goes back into his shredding and back into the show basically. So he kind of just stood there doing the same notes over and over again, like, like, you know, heavy low key notes, just watching the situation. Really interesting to see how he reacted in my opinion, which I thought was super cool. It actually kind of reminded me of uh, Guns N' Roses, St. Louis uh, in 1991 with the riot show when Axel jumped out into the crowd and then uh, the band kind of kept playing like the low Rocket Queen notes while that whole situation was going on and then he got back on stage. It kind of reminded me of that. Um, but anyway, luckily uh, somebody gave her water and eventually she re regained consciousness and she got back up and she was shaking, like hardcore shaking. And then um, eventually security escorted her and uh, her father out through the whole crowd uh, to the back of the venue. I have no idea what happened with them. I hope she's okay. Um, but that was, that was the end of that super scary and super just shocking and random part of the show for me. I noticed somebody actually uploaded part of the show on YouTube, which I don't think it's up there anymore. Uh, they were like a little bit further back in the crowd and they were recording Buckethead and the show and everything. And it was actually at this point when that happened. And like in the video, you can't really, you can, it's not super noticeable that this was happening, but I did notice you can see like the flashlight and people like waving that, you know, they need help over in this area. So that was just one of the craziest things I've ever experienced at a concert. Um, so yeah, that was that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Buckethead continued to play. Uh, and, 
you know, I was very excited for him to get to his uh, toy por portion of the show, throwing out some toys and everything. And uh, eventually he did get to that part of the show. You could see his toy bag just sitting next to his amps the whole night. And the last show I went to, he did throw me, he did throw me uh, a Star Wars toy and I got it. And it was one of the things I'll never forget in my whole life was getting a toy from Buckethead. Um, like I said, once again, if you do want to see the toy, uh, my video, my review from that, from that concert is still up here. So if you wanted to see that, uh, please check it out. Um, but I was really, really, really hoping to get another toy this time, especially with me being even closer this time in the second row. So this time though, it was a little different though, because at the house of blues, the stage, the edge of the stage is like right in front of the first row for the most part. So when he was doing this segment, he was just kind of like tossing the stuff in the crowd. But this go round, there's actually, there's a little, there's like more of a walkway in between the first row and the stage. And he kind of just walked down the steps of the stage and walked down the whole uh, middle, uh, you know, that little section there, that little alleyway and uh, handed the toys to people in the first and second row or whatever. And uh, man, when he was like walking down there, he's getting closer. It's just like, everybody is all up on you. And it's just like, it's so tight. Everyone is just all up your ass and all on, on your back and just like reaching over you. And just like, it's so tight. Like you can't, I couldn't even get my phone out to record because it was so tight. Everyone was just all up on each other, trying to get a toy and trying to like, you know, touch them and, you know, see them up close like that. He eventually came in front of me and, uh, there was this guy who I believe actually commented on my uh, vlog video who was right in front of me. He was wearing a bucket head uh, bucket and he had a mask and everything. And uh, just a side note, of course, there's numerous people with buckets and everything and masks and, uh, you know, dressed up for the concert. But anyway, this guy in front of me, uh, Buckethead, was showing him a lot of attention. And I, of course, I wanted the toy, but I thought to myself in the moment, I was like, Am I really going to like jump, jump in front of this dude and like try to get a toy and mess up his moment? No, like that's, that's, that's just fucked up. I wasn't going to fuck up his experience and his memory and his moment uh, while he had that, that, you know, those few seconds with Buckethead. So I kind of just laid off a little bit and let him uh, have that moment. But I will say, I was hoping Buckethead would see that and be like, you're a nice guy. Let me give you a fucking toy. But he didn't. It's all good. Um, so he kept on going and uh, gave other people toys and then went back up the stage. Something else about the toy segment of the show that I thought was interesting. So many people were giving Buckethead toys, which is pretty common, I guess, for any Buckethead show. But for me, it was the most I ever really realized it out of any of the shows that I've been to for Buckethead, but there are just so many people giving him stuff. And uh, he, he would just like kind of set it on the stage and then after the whole segment was over, P-Sticks kind of just took all the stuff and just put it behind the drum set. I don't even know what they do with it, but I uh, thought that was cool. Um, one thing I especially thought was cool about this situation was there was this like, uh, there's this girl next to me and she wanted to give him like something. I don't even know exactly what it was. I think it was like pictures or something. Like she really wanted to give it to him, but when he happened to go by, he never got it from her. And this dude um, that was next to her was like, you want to give that to him? This fan. And uh, she was like, yeah. And she's, he was like, here. And like, I want to say he like, <laughs> I don't know if he took his hat off, but he had like, it was some container. I don't know if it was his hat or just the container or something, but he put um her pictures in that container or hat and he threw it on the stage and uh yeah like i said after the segment was over peace sticks happened to gather all the stuff and put it behind the drum set and that was one of the things so i thought that was super cool of the fan the, the dude that was like he saw that this girl wanted to give him something and didn't have the chance to do it so he was like i'm gonna make it a point to make sure that happens just really cool um really cool moment and uh something i i definitely noticed and it was memorable for me played a little bit more um i will say i was surprised uh he didn't he never played nottingham lace he never played welcome to Bucketheadland. land um he never played the redeem team these are some songs that I was expecting him to play and hoping that he would play. I do remember like when I was waiting in line before the concert, I remember somebody was pre-gaming in their truck listening to Nottingham Lace. So he might have been a little disappointed that he never played it, but uh, he played a little bit longer. And then uh, 
you know, the toy thing is that every single show, and even back in the day with Guns N' Roses, he would do that. But the other segment that he does at every single show is he uh, lets, you know, the fans in the front also play his kill switch. So that was something else that uh, I was, you know, hoping I could maybe get a chance to do. I had never played with the kill switch before. Um, and once again, he came down the little alleyway and was letting everyone play his kill switch. Not everyone, but letting a lot of people play his kill switch. I will say, it seemed like he really, really, really spent a lot of time and effort on this segment of the show. Like, he was really letting, like, anybody who wanted to do it get a shot at it. He was really taking his time. I thought that was super cool. It wasn't like he was just fucking speeding through it. And it's like, you, you really don't have a good chance to do it. Like, you really, I think for this segment of the show, you have a good shot at doing it if you're close enough. And if you just put in that effort, like, I want to fucking do it. So, uh, anyway, one little quick thing that just popped in my mind uh, about his white Les Paul. I did notice there were a couple scuffs on it. It almost looked like a couple burn marks, like, on the top of his guitar and the middle, like, right behind the strings. Uh, I don't know what happened with that. I do know that I want to say he had some guitar stolen from him. I want to say in Georgia recently, like over the past year or two. And I, this is purely speculation, but I do wonder if maybe this was one of the guitars that was stolen and then he got it back and it was a little messed up. Uh, I don't know, but that was something I noticed. He walks in front of us and I'm really happy to say, I got to play Buckethead's Kill Switch for the first time ever. It was an unforgettable, crazy experience, and I was so into it. Like, I think a lot of people, when they're playing the Kill Switch, they're just, you know, hitting the button over and over again. But when I was doing it, I'm like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, like, act like I am, like, a fucking DJ, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna really try to, like, play the beat that's going on in my head. So I was, like, really fucking into it. And uh, I didn't get a video of me doing that because obviously I'm just experiencing the moment and not <laughs> wanting to record a video. But I'm really hoping that at some point somebody uploads that part of the concert and somehow I can see myself and hear myself uh, playing the kill switch and I can kind of like cut that part out of the video and sa save that forever. Because I know I, I did record a portion of the fans after me playing it and I'm really I thought it was super cool I got a comment on my video saying like thank you so much for uploading this video I was I'm so glad because that part that portion of your video I could see myself playing the kill switch and I thought that was super awesome that like he had that experience and that I happened to be recording it and uploading it and he's gonna have that forever and uh, I'm hoping that eventually I can have that same uh, feeling and experience as far as having the video forever. But regardless, unforgettable experience. That was fucking unreal. So last show, I got a toy. This show, I got to do the kill switch. And uh, just super stoked and pumped. I'll never forget it. Goes back on stage, does a few more songs, and uh, eventually he, uh, he kind of just uh, walks off stage, does like a really, really quick intermission. It was only like a minute, maybe even less. And then comes back on and does a little bit more. And uh, he ended with Soothsayer, which is one of his most popular songs, one of his most emotional songs, and a really great song to end the set with. I uh, really, really enjoyed how he ended on such a such a shredding solo and such like such high notes on the solos and just an emotional song. I mean, I can't believe people. Some people say this motherfucker doesn't have soul, like. Yeah, he's a shredder, but he has so much soul. Um, it, you know, I just, it just baffles me how people would think that. But, you know, everyone has their opinion, I guess. Uh, anyway, so yeah, ends with Sue Sayer and then uh, leaves the stage. And man, that was Buckethead for the third time. I will say also, uh, during the show, there were multiple altercations in the crowd, which was something that was interesting. And, uh, yeah, I uh, I thought the show was great overall. I, I thought it was very different. I The vibe of the venue, the venue itself, and the performance, and just everything. The, the drummer, him sing, the, the drummer singing, it was just so different. And him playing a lot of material that I wasn't super familiar with, and playing a lot of covers, it was just so different. And I really enjoyed that, how different it was. I know some people I saw in the comments of other videos and stuff were actually kind of disappointed because they wanted more of the hits. They wanted more of the stuff you would expect and not, they weren't maybe as big of fans of the drummer. 
Uh, I don't even know the drummer's name, just a young guy. Kind of almost looks like Brain a little bit, but uh, oh man, if fucking Brain was there, I, that would have that would have been insane. I love Brain. But um, yeah, so that was, that was that, great concert. I really don't have too many complaints at all. Uh, I did think to myself at the end of the show that I was like, you know, I've, I've seen Buckethead three times, which is the second most of any artist I've ever seen other than Guns N' Roses. And I'm like, I don't have a single shirt of his other than the shirt I just bought. I should just go and get the other shirt, you know, whatever. And uh, so that's what I did. I immediately went to the merch and they had plenty of the shirts left and I went ahead and got the other shirt. And um, yeah, left the venue and I started to drive home. And as, as I'm driving home, actually leaving the venue, I noticed that there were a few people waiting next to the back door of the venue. And I was thinking like, man, that'd be cool to see them, but I'm, I'm already in the mindset of heading home. So fuck it, I'm just gonna head home. So got a few minutes down the road and uh, basically long story short, kind of thought about it and I was like, fuck that shit. I'm gonna go back to the venue, especially cause the traffic wasn't bad or anything. Like I said, it's not like a super big venue. I was like, I'm gonna go and see if I can catch him leaving the venue. That'd just be another experience, another memory on top of this uh, great concert that I just went to. So I went back to the venue and there were less people waiting at this time, but there still were people waiting. And I waited for a good half hour. And by that point, it was uh, basically just me and this one other dude left. And a lot of the time while we were waiting, there would be like security or uh, P sticks. Uh, his guitar tech would come out and be like, hey, he's not gonna sign any autographs. Um, like, please don't expect anything crazy. And I was kind of wondering like, is he just saying this to be a dick or like what? But in the long run, listen, you know, thinking back on it now, I think him and the security guy were being just completely honest. Like, you know, don't expect anything crazy. Uh, he's not gonna sign, he's not gonna like, he's not gonna like come up and talk or anything. Um, he's just being 100% honest. So he's just saying like, don't waste your time if, if you know, and expect anything crazy. So I really appreciate that. They, they're actually super nice. And uh, luckily <clears throat> the one security guy did tell me like, you know, he's gonna be coming out of this particular door. And I'm glad he told me that because if I didn't know that, I wouldn't have ever seen him. So that pretty much kind of says what's gonna happen next. So I changed my vantage point and then a few minutes later, uh, Buckethead came out and uh, just got right into this van and uh, they basically left. And I will say, so it's like, what did Buckethead look like when he came out? And I saw him for like 2.2 seconds. It was like so quick. It was like a flash. He just walks out, gets into the van and that was it. But basically he kind of just, he did, he obviously wasn't wearing his bucket or anything. I don't know if he was wearing a mask, couldn't see anything relating to his face. I know sometimes if he's like not performing and he is out, he will still wear like a scary Halloween mask of any, of any kind. But <clears throat> basically he kind of just walked out and all you see is like his hair covering the side of his head. And he was like kind of facing the wall and just walked by and went into the van, uh, which was kind of like, in between, um, which was next to the wall. So he was just walking in between the wall and the van and got in the van and then, yeah, uh, yeah, P Sticks gets in the driver's seat and they left. And that was the end of the Buckethead show. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I am, I have to say overall, it was one of the best concerts I've ever been to. And I really like that venue and I wanna go back to that venue even though it's like really, small and it's just old it was it was made in the 60s and it's all the history that's happened there i just i don't know if there's a lot of artists that i personally listen to that would play there but i will definitely be on the lookout and i'll say man compared to jane's addiction that i just saw the other day <laughs> that was that was the worst concert i've ever been to and it wasn't because of jane's addiction it was all the other factors but this one just <laughs> blew it out of the water it was great um yeah, so overall he played he played for in total, I mean, over two hours, which I was really surprised about. I didn't expect him to play that long, but he played for over two hours. Uh and this is this is not counting the intermissions and stuff. Uh I'd say like maybe two hours, twenty minutes is what he physically played. And by the time that I left the venue after the van left, I mean it was uh it was past midnight. It was like twelve fifteen, so 
it was it was a really fun night and I just when I got home I couldn't stop thinking about the concert I was just online reading about the concert reading about the venue reading about all these different things reading about the tour and even like uh like when I was going to bed that night couldn't stop thinking about the concert and even the next day just couldn't stop thinking about the concert couldn't stop talking about the concert with everyone and just once again just looking up youtube videos reading other fans comments on it socializing with other fans that were there it was just great it really was great i uh i am just so stoked and uh yeah end of the end of the night also was driving home listening to some ice cube raw footage um so that's where i'm at in my ice cube discography so yeah buckethead orlando florida the plaza live one of the best concerts i've ever been to it was on august 31st 2024 and man i am uh i'm still just so happy about everything so hope you all enjoyed please comment like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one And him playing a lot of material I what material I was and him playing a lot of material and him playing a lot of material that I wasn't super familiar with.